see this guy out of the corner of my eye, I feel like, whoa, somebody's there. (laughs) You know, in the Greek, this word truth doesn't just refer to God's written word. It also refers to an honesty of heart and a purity of motive. Like, we cannot win a spiritual battle if we are lying to ourselves, if we're deceiving others, if we're running from the conviction of the Holy Spirit, if we say we believe, but then we're living in a total contradiction to that, right? In those cases, our foundation is not stable. Our foundation is shifting sand, and we're going to be tossed around by the strategies of the enemy, if we do not stand on God's truth, right? Truth, his truth is foundational, right? Because truth holds everything together. Through the incarnation, the truth of God became flesh. In the good news of Christ, this truth is now proclaimed to the world. The Christian teaching is called the truth. When Paul refers to false teachers in 2 Timothy 4.4 by saying they have left the path of truth. Those who are lost refuse to love the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 says, He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. On the other hand, salvation is is really equal to coming to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4 says this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. 2 Peter 1.12 talks about mature Christians and says, Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth that you've been taught. Like that's mature Christians are established or they're standing firm in truth. And then Paul talks about where that teaching takes place is the church. And Paul tells Timothy, this is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Now, that's only true if the church sticks with God's word, sticks with God's revealed truth found in his word. And here's what truth is. Truth is God's opinion on any matter. Like, there's a stability to that, not having to try to figure it out. But when God just says it and you believe it, that's the foundation, God's opinion on any matter. So trust God's truth. Like, that's the objective standard that we can rely on. Without concrete allegiance to that truth, you're missing your girdle. You're missing your belt. You're not fully armored. And you're left weak and susceptible to things that may look right. Have you ever seen something that, that kind of looks right? That kind of sounds right. But then you line it up with God's word and it's, not right. Do you think there might be things in our culture that looks right or sounds right, but then you line it up with God's word and you have to go, but it's not right because God says something very different than that. That's the truth that can act as a stabilizer in your life when you just say, if, if there's a difference of opinion between mine and God's, I go with God's. That's what faith is built on. That's the stabilizing factor. Because let me ask you this. If it's not, if your basis for truth is not God's opinion on a matter, then what is it? How do you determine what is true? Your feelings? Because we know that works well. Those are stable. (laughs) Right? No, emotions by definition are unstable. Feelings change based on external stimuli, uh, sometimes moment by moment. The, the right movie with the right music and somber storyline can bring tears to my eyes. Uh, Braveheart or Remember the Titans or Inside Out, you know, <laughs> just the right mixture can, can get you. Father stuff. I don't know dads if you're with me, but like a movie that's about like, dads or a video that's about dads and sons. If you have a video like that, like keep it to yourself. <laughs> All right, I don't want to see it because I'll cry. I don't want to, you know, that, it can get me emotionally. But then I can hear something funny and in the next minute I can be laughing. Anybody else understand that swing? 
Does that sound like something you'd want to build your foundation of your house on or your life on? No way. How about your intelligence? Your understanding of a matter, like even the most brilliant among us. Let me just ask it this way. Have you ever changed your mind on anything? Right. That probably means it's not a good foundation, your intelligence. If you haven't changed your mind on anything, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a different problem. I'll have to preach on that a different time. It's called pride. But anyway... Uh, all of us, after acquiring more information or gaining new perspective, we've changed our mind before. Uh, minds change, sometimes from day to day, uh, especially politicians in the middle of an election. You can hear them talk about their opinion on a matter and, and what's true, and then in the next like week, it's changed a little bit. Maybe you haven't seen that before. I don't know. What about your gut? I've heard people just talk about, I just trust my gut. What part of your gut? <laughs> right, is that trustworthy? Like, can you trust your gut? Every human being has a conscience. That's really what they mean by their gut. But they have a conscience, and it's that deep internal instinct that, like, steers you morally. But our conscience is part of our humanity. And our humanity is frail and susceptible to sin, even deception. And it's significantly shaped by things like our environment, our parents, our teachers, our life circumstances. Now, the Holy Spirit awakens and engages our conscience after we're born again, but it's still very unreliable as an ultimate source of determining truth. Why? Because even the conscience... Can change. Has there ever been something in your life that was very, very wrong and now you're okay with it? Or you were okay with something and then as you grew, it became very, very wrong for you. It means your gut changed, right? All of these things are gifts from God. Your conscience, your intelligence, your emotions, those are all gifts from God, and they should be used and enjoyed, but they're all unreliable as the ultimate source or foundation for truth. Nothing should be trusted to govern your life like an unchangeable standard, truth, which is God's opinion on any matter. See, only God is the author and originator of truth. And so knowing him and his word is the only way to know how to function with the belt of truth because only God can define what is entirely true. And truth holds everything together. Much of our battle takes place right between, right between the ears, does it not? The things that you are struggling with. The things that make you feel defeated out in Oconomowoc. The things that you cannot face for yet another day. Can I just be so bold as to say none of those things are your real problem? The real problem is waged in your mind. The real problem is what do you believe to be true? That's the real battle. And what do you base that on? Because when you stand firmly firmly on the truth of God as revealed in his word, when his truth is at the core of your being, when it comes first, then strength flows into every other area of your life. Because truth, God's truth, holds everything together. But remember, it's the truth you know that sets you free. When something is true, but, it, but you don't know it, then it doesn't change you. John 8, 31 and 32 says, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And here's the thing. So if you remain faithful to my teachings, you will know the truth. And the truth that you know will set you free. So what is the truth? I think a better question isn't what is truth, but who is truth? Jesus said... I am the way, the truth, and the life. You could read that, I am, which is the revealed name of God in the Old Testament, covenant name of God in the Old Testament, I am. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. 
Now, Jesus identifies himself as the truth. He literally is truth. He embodies it. Everything in him is true. In our modern-day mindset, that sounds exclusive and terrible to many. When they read this last part, no one can come to the Father except through me, they go, but that doesn't make sense. Like this, 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 and they have these reasons and the ex- ex- explanations, and they go, that can't be true because, and, and I go, I think it's true because it doesn't matter if it sounds palatable to me. It matters on who said it. Any truth claim has to be, you have to take it kind of through a grid. And the first thing is, who said it? Are they trustworthy? When a t- politician makes a promise, right, you have to go, who said it? What's their track record at telling the truth? When you ask that about Christ, it's like, he's got a pretty good track record. It's 100%. Is he trustworthy? Yes. Does, he, does this person have a habit of stretching the truth? Do they have a habit of lying? What, one of the questions I ask is, when it comes to this, what would it have gained Jesus to lie about that? It actually cost him his life to make claims like that. It gained him nothing if it's not true. Has he demonstrated truth? The fact that Jesus went the full way to the cross, never reversed course. He didn't go, ha, ha, I'm just kidding. Put the spikes down, let's talk. He didn't do that. He went the full way for you and for me. Because it was true. It was true. He was true. And I love this description of Christ given in Colossians 1.17 by Paul. The NLV says this, Christ was before all things. All things are, they're held together. They're held together by him. And that shouldn't surprise us because truth holds everything together. And Jesus is, was, and forever, ever, ever will be 